1980s, when Keith and I were in college. In fact, I have not been able to pinpoint where or when this question first appeared. For all I know, Keith started an international trend. When Keith and I parted ways after graduation, the question largely disappeared from my life, at least for a while. Katie asked the question occasionally, having picked it up from Keith, but I never heard anyone else ask it. Then our son Will, appropriately enough, given his origins, started asking the question about ten years ago. I noticed his friends also posed the question. And then, almost overnight, it seemed that everywhere I went, someone was asking this question. It is now a staple of everyday conversations, especially among those under 30, though it is certainly not confined to millennials. Some traditional grammarians may lament the spread of this particular question, complaining, perhaps, about the seeming superfluity of weight. Others might go further and point to it as just more proof of the degradation of the English language and the decline of civilization. But haters are going to hate, as they say, and in this case the skeptics are wrong, because wait what is a truly great question. Indeed, this deceptively simple question is essential, if not profound, once you fully appreciate how it can be used. To begin, wait what is remarkably flexible, which might explain some of its popularity. The question can be asked in a variety of ways depending on what the occasion demands. A plain spoken, wait, what, for example, can simply be a way to ask a person to repeat what she said and to elaborate a bit because the assertion or suggestion was surprising and slightly hard to believe. An elongated wait, followed by a short but emphasized what, is a good way to indicate genuine incredulity. It's a bit like asking politely, did you really just say that? Or, are you kidding? The reverse formulation, featuring a short wait, followed by an elongated what, can be used when someone has asked you to do something, and it can effectively convey suspicion and skepticism about the motives behind the request or downright opposition to what is being asked of you. The last formulation is the way my kids most often pose the question in our conversations. Typically, they ask this question when I get to the point in a conversation where I'm suggesting that they do a chore or two. From their perspective, they hear me saying something like, blah, 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 and then I'd like you to clean your room. And at that precise moment, the question inevitably comes, wait, what? Did you say clean a rooms? Wait, what? is first on my list of essential questions because it is an effective way of asking for clarification. And clarification is the first step toward truly understanding something, whether it is an idea, an opinion, a belief, or a business proposal. It's probably not a good idea to ask this question in response to a marriage proposal. Just saying, the weight that precedes the what could be seen as just a useless rhetorical tick but I think it's crucial because it reminds you and others to slow down to make sure you truly understand. Too often we fail to pause for clarification, thinking that we understand something before we do. In doing so, we miss the opportunity to grasp the full significance of an idea, an assertion, or an event. Asking wait what is a good way to capture rather than miss those opportunities. To give an example, years ago, Katie and I, along with a couple of friends, traveled to Norway to hike and kayak. While there, we met up with another old friend who was working as a bush pilot, taking passengers on sightseeing trips and to remote camping areas. When he heard we were planning to hike near a particular fjord the next day, he asked if we could take one of his clients with us, a 19-year-old Japanese guy, who wanted to see this particular fjord. We agreed and picked him up the next day. His English was a little spotty and our Japanese was non-existent, so it was a fairly quiet ride. When we arrived at the fjord, our new friend immediately jumped out of the car and took an album cover out of his backpack. He then began running around to different spots, stopping occasionally to hold up the album cover and look up the fjord to a large mountain in the distance. Then he would scramble to a different spot and pause again. We all glanced at each other while watching him, not sure what was happening and worried that something might be wrong. When we finally caught up with him, we saw that the album cover had a picture of a fjord on it with a large mountain in the distance. The album was a symphony by Edvard Grieg, the Norwegian composer. We finally realized that the picture on the album...